everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Creating a Village. I'm Millie, your host, here to help nurture the village within you. And today we have a really special guest, Miss Margaret. Yay! <laughs> Miss Margaret, if you could please, <laughs> if you could please introduce yourself. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is uh, Margaret Lee, and I'm the CEO founder of Design Styles for Living, which is a design build management firm. And we um, handle projects from commercial to residential, and we help people with the planning process, you know, with whatever dream or vision that you have, we help you to make it come alive. Yeah. Yeah. Period. I love that. <laughs> Um, so I think this conversation is going to be really good because the way I met Miss Margaret was, um, at the Georgia Black uh, Expo Business and Technology Summit. And we were just having a conversation. I was asking her about designing, um, an interior for like the community center that I eventually want to have with creating a village. And she was just telling me about how, you know, you have to know where you're going. You have to know what exactly it is that you're trying to achieve before you even start planning this huge thing. But you really have to break down each component of what you hope to accomplish in order for you to get there effectively. And so I thought that would be a really good, you know, skill and asset to teach to the village. Um, so my first question to you is, what would you say planning and development is and what is the importance of it in like, I guess, everyday life? Okay. Well, first of all, let me just tell you about planning and development in a whole different um, look and you'll see how it applies to life as well. So, of course, you know, in the architectural design space, you know, we have to do, when we're getting ready to start a project, a person comes to us with a vision, right? So this is my vision. This is what I want to happen. You know, so now we have to put in planning and development in order for that to manifest. And so what I found out is that that same thing applies to any type of dream or vision that you have. And it may not have anything to do with design. But those same principles still apply mm. to a person's everyday, you know, goal and dream and, which, and what they want to accomplish. So what I did, I took my design skills and, um, you know, God just told me just, you know, start building people, helping people to find their passion and their purpose so they can live out the dream. Now, sometimes the dream is huge. When the dream is huge. And it's, you know, mm. and it's bigger than you. That's how you know it's a dream. Because anytime God gives you a dream, it's always going to be bigger than what you can handle. And so if it's not, it's going to be, you don't need no help. But when it is, then you got to break that down into actually components, right? Um, because, you you know, God is always going to mm. show you the finished product of a dream. But you're not going to know how you're going to get there. That's the part that you don't see. And so, therefore, that's when you're putting mm -hmm. yourself because you're the one that's moving the dream and God is supplying it. So you got to put certain things and steps in place so that you can start manifesting. And it's going to take time. You know, no, no dream that's, that has ever been successful just happened overnight. You have some people that it happened overnight for something, but that was only a part of it. That wasn't the whole thing is only a part of it. So yeah. when it comes down to planning, the first thing you want to do, you know, is find out, am I passionate about this when I'm going for it? Right? Because it, because whatever you're passionate about, it's going to, mm -hmm. you know, that's your purpose because they're intertwined. And the gift that's inside you, once you find out what that is, then you can start going after the dream because then you're focused. You have a, a sense of direction. You have to, you know, you hear people say all the time is to set a goal, do a goal, because it's, it's a fact. When you put goals down and, and get to yeah. writing, 
you know, don't type it, don't speak it in it, you know. If something happens when you write certain things down, it's like the the spirit of your your spirit man pours out other stuff that you can only get with writing. And once you've written it down, guess what? Then you can go mm -hmm. and put it on those professional platforms and stuff like that. But the whole purpose is to understand all the pieces, you know, that it, that this dream, the, your purpose in life that, that you're going for. Because once you go for your purpose, once you find that out, you, you will be far more happier. You know, and, and it's always, the dream is always yeah. going to be serving somebody. So get used to, to serving. Because that's the whole life purpose is all about is serving. It, nothing is, anything that you've gone through is never just for you. It's for somebody else. You know, there's a whole group of people that only you can reach that other people can't. So that's why I tell people, you don't copy nobody's dream because you can't compete with somebody else's dream. That's not your assignment. You weren't called over there. Okay. <laughs> so be fair. I would say be very leery of that. <laughs> so when you're talking about with your uh, in establishing your plan, the first thing you want to do, everything that's inside you concerning that you're passionate about, write the, those first 10 things down. Because you're not going to accomplish all 10 of them at one time. But it's important to write it down. And it could be 20, 30, whatever. You know, because one thing about your dream and your purpose, it changes along the journey. So you have to have a place to start. So when you have mm -hmm. a place to start, be prepared that there are certain things that are happen within that plan. Okay, I'm going to have to go back to that plan because I got to change that. Because now something else happened, then God put something else in. So there are, but, but it's still the journey. You see what I'm saying? You're still on the purpose. But there's things you have, you have to be yeah. able to shift. And if you don't have a plan written down in place, you can't go back to it. And the, the beauty of, going, of doing a plan, uh, and I'll use myself as an example. Um, like I built a dream center. You know, we have the dream center where as a business incubator, it's not something that I started off doing and wanted to do. I just wanted to be a nice, you know, office, stuff like that. But you know, God, we told me that. He said, okay, I need you to get back to building people. And so the next thing I know, it's like, okay, well, how do I do that? And so and then the dream, then the dream center came. So it's okay. You're going to help people to design a pathway <laughs> for their dream. So he put the, you see how that happened? I'm a designer. Okay, but yeah. it all falls in line. So now, now you gonna now um design it, helping people design a pathway to their dreams to make it happen. But it's all about the purpose, because without the purpose, nothing else really matters. If you're chasing dollars, you're not gonna last. Mm -hmm. It's not gonna last because with the purpose and the dream, the money is going to come. Because the vision will make room for you. Yes, most definitely. It'll make room for you. So, so that's why you know I I know I was told mm. by my 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 father. <laughs> you know he meant well. You know he's from the islands. He's Jamaican, and and you know a lot of times people you know in Jamaica they want you you either going to be a doctor or a lawyer or something like that. You know, like that's the only field. And so, but that was yeah. his dream. You see what I'm saying? And so I changed my major from design and going into nursing. I'm like, well, I like people. You know, he's a matriarch. But then when I found out, mm -hmm. once I saw blood, I'm like, oh, I'm, I flunked out of college. That's <laughs> <laughs> the year of nursing. Oh, that was a wrap. I mean, he was disappointed. You know? Mm -hmm. hey. And then years later, you but know, it wasn't it wasn't your calling. That was not my calling. That was not I, that was not my assignment. See, <laughs> I wasn't supposed to be over there because <laughs> I saw that blood, and then I'm you know, <laughs> it was like say for me. <laughs> yeah. So you know, so years later, after marriage and kids, I end up you know my kids are grown. I went back to school and got my degree in interior architecture and design. That's what I did. And when I tell you, mm, it, it was where I was supposed amazing. to be. 
you know, I had never had a three point. I soared through that mm. program. You know what I mean? And so it, it's so important for the planning mm -hmm. to really hone in on what that is and, and slice that whole thing up, you know? So that's what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Hmm. So I, I had a question. I kind of have two questions now. Okay. Um, Earlier you were saying to write down, oh, earlier you were saying to write down the like 10 things that someone can find that they're passionate about. Mm -hmm. I know that is often kind of like a struggle for people to yeah. recognize what they're yeah. passionate about or what they're good at, what their gifts are, mm -hmm. because, you know, things that come naturally to you you don't think about it because it comes naturally. It Do comes you have naturally. like any recommendations on, yeah. Do you have any recommendations on, um, I guess, identifying those gifts? Yeah. One, the one of the like, ways that you're going to identify person. that <laughs> gift is what keeps coming back to you and what keeps you up at night. You'll keep coming back to something that you're passionate about. Mm -hmm. You'll keep coming back to it in some kind of way. You, even though you be trying to get away from it, but it'll keep coming right back to you. You be like, you mm. know, and it's something that you're very passionate about. Now, I want you to think about something that a problem that you want to solve that keeps coming back to you that you're very passionate about. What is that one thing? Answer the question. <laughs> I was asking you oh, are you asking me right now? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Um, something that <laughs> keeps going, <laughs> something that keeps showing up in my life um, is definitely like social media and marketing, which is really crazy because I never, like I avoided it because I just thought it required too much of my brain power. Like I could yeah. do some things in it. But right. I didn't see myself like actually going in to thoroughly learn about all of these guidelines and things to right. do it as a career. But it keeps showing up like right in my face. <laughs> yeah. And that's and that's usually one of the things and you need and right now you're into that right now because there's a purpose in there for you mm -hmm. to be in there that God is placing you. So there's a certain audience that you can reach that I can't reach. There's a certain audience that I can reach that you can't reach. Mm. You see what I'm saying? But it, but this is this is the assignment. Yeah. The whole thing is is that when God gives you an assignment, He gives you the option to say yes or no. Say yes mm -hmm. to the assignment. Yeah, that is that is completely true. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You know. And then once I once I said yes yeah. to this assignment, I was like, Lord, I wish I would have said yes a long time ago. You know what I mean? Because I have people mm -hmm. coming to the door every yes. day, yeah. all the time. They come to the door. What are you guys doing? When I tell them that, you know, what we do, you know, we don't only just, you know, design our space and build our space, but now we're building people too, using the same design skills. That's the crazy part. It's the same. You know, you it's come to me with a vision. It's still the same concept, but I'm just shifting it. But I'm still within that space. Yes. And, and that's what I really want you to see in how the vision will shift. Be open to the shift. You know what I mean? Mm. But you're still within that assignment. Mm. That's what I learned. I have a question about that being open to the shift thing. Because mm -hmm. I think it's sometimes hard to distinguish when you're presented with an opportunity that's like around your field, but it'll possibly but you don't know that it'll possibly kind of derail you how how are you aware of what is a proper shift well i guess you can't really determine what's a proper shift but how are you like more cognizant of what is potentially well, like the shift. best shift for you to be receptive to mm -hmm. okay. yes yeah yeah like for instance <laughs> I, like now I'll use myself as an example um you remember in 2009 when the economy went bust and everything was haywire, people losing their houses, crazy stuff, right? Remember that? In 2009 when the economy went bad? Yes. Okay. 
a now, little bit. I had to a little I bit. Had I was like eight. Okay. <laughs> okay. So anyway, so in two thousand and nine, you know, there was a bad economy. The economy went bad and everything like that. And so I had I needed to make a decision before it got real bad. And that decision mm-hmm. was, okay, well, our industry is shut down. Everything was shut down and stuff and all that, right? So I needed to make a decision to either close my office space and go find a part-time job and find a job. No, I can't do that because I got to stay tr- true to the dream. That I felt like I wasn't true to the dream and I was losing. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, no, okay, if I go and work for somebody, oh, my God, then I'm giving up on my dream. That is not true. Mm. But I didn't see that then. But at that point, I needed to make a shift. Yeah. And I needed to make that quickly, but I got stuck. And I got stuck of, I'm not being mm. true to the dream. And so, and, and I'll tell the audience like this, if you see something like that where you need to shift and, and um, you need to get off the struggle bus and go get that job <laughs> and, and stop <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, and look at it. And, and why are you one, speaking to me right now? I was telling you because I've been there. That's why I can tell you this. And so, and because I did not, I, I did not go and make a move. I ended up losing my house, losing other property, and everything was going mm. one by one. But I was still over there. No, I, I got to stay to the dream. Even to the point where my kids were saying, "Mama, just go get a job." No, don't tell me go get a job. <laughs> I'm holding out. I'm holding out. Not the kids that mama. I'm holding out. Oh I'm my saying. goodness. And then I end up putting my no. kids through stuff that they didn't even have to go through. If I would just went on ahead and got a job, mm. get off the struggle bus. And the thing is, a lot of us, we hate our jobs because it's not your passion. It's not where you want to be. But I'm going to tell you, look at your job a different way. Look at your yeah. job as your first investor. Okay, they're, they're my investors. When they give you a paycheck, do your best on that job. Give them people what they want. Because guess what? They are giving you the money mm-hmm. so that you can go ahead and invest in your dream. You're working for the money. So look at them as the investors. So when they get on your nerve, just look at your little investors. Say, look at my investors trying to make me better. You know, and, and, just, and just be smiling because you already know. Period. Yeah, going in with a big old smile. You can't get on my nerves today because I need my investment check. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you need the investment check. So look at it in that retrospect. <laughs> and the thing is, even though you are in, in your vision and your passion and what you're doing, and that vision may not be producing the monies that you need right now. Okay, you got to be able to ship. Like I said, don't get stuck. Mm, tell me about it. And go and find a job that, and it can be even in a, it can be even in a job in where you're trying to go, because you never know what connections you're going to make on that mm-hmm. job. Like say, if you're in media, go to a media company kind of trying to find a media job, so you can gain more experience and possibly you can even learn from. You know, other people who have been doing it a long time and then building also networks. So when you get ready to Mm -hmm. go into what you're doing, guess what? You already got people you can connect with, you know, because you met them on the job that was supplying your need. You see what I'm saying? So like I said, if if you need to get a job, get a job. Mm -hmm. It's only temporary. It's the only place to start. It's not the end goal. No. (laughs) And you'd be surprised how many yeah. people are like look. Now that that was me for a really nobody. long time. And that's another thing I want to talk about. Okay, everybody is shifting everybody to entrepreneurship. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna tell you, entrepreneurship is not for the weak and the faint. And not only that, you need to be called to it. If you are not called for entrepreneurship, don't go to entrepreneurship. Because guess what? If God has called you to a nine to five, a corporation. There is a way to climb the corporate ladder and still be, there's purpose there. Also, too, everybody can't be a business mm-hmm. owner. You know what I mean? And, you know, and being a business owner can be a lonely place. Can you handle that? At the end of the day, you have the vision. Everybody going home where you still plugging on this vision. Can you handle that? 
because it's just you and God by yourself. You need to be able to handle that too. So, you know, I tell people, really think about it. That's why I said very important. You know, you may find out that your vision and your purpose is to serve in corporate, you know, the corporate arena for different things. You know, so to use that mm-hmm. for an example, you know, you may you may be a good accountant, you know, and your purpose is to, you know, mm-hmm. to be an accountant, handle money. That's important. You know? So things like that. Yeah. Did I answer your question? Yes, you oh. answered it significantly because for the longest time after I graduated, I was like, I don't want no job. That's not, I want to stay true to yeah. my non-existent dream. Um, but I was like, there will be a dream. So therefore, thus, I don't need right. a job. Right. <laughs> but yeah, no, but now I've actually started working like with marketing agencies and stuff. And I'm like, oh, this is so nice. And I I really, I associated kind of jobs with taking away freedom and just, yeah. I don't know, my, my mind on mm-hmm. jobs was like really crazy, but I'm very thankful for it now because also I needed money because my right. dad, anyway, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh my yeah. goodness. That, and that makes sense. It's me, you know, and then also too, um, a lot what a lot of people don't realize is that we're on a journey. Everybody have a, a journey road and there's different mm-hmm. people that come on your journey for different reasons. And sometimes that can lead to, you know, is at a job somewhere, you know? Mm-hmm. So Yeah, most definitely. Um I have a question. Okay. What was the thing called that with all the circles that we made? Oh, that's what is that called? Programming. <laughs> that's called program and program. Oh, program. Yeah, it's called programming. And so we use that. You know, um, architects and interior designers use that because that's how we filter out the dream. What is the vision for this project? Like like how I did with you, you know, you are already, this is what I need mm-hmm. in this space. So when you are filtering out ideas, what do the, what are the components? Yes. Oh yeah, yeah, that's it. Uh-huh. And you put those, and you put. Yeah, I was just trying to show people. the audience. Yeah, yeah. You put that in that circle. Yeah. And whatever that is, like, like for an example, um, just think about your dream. What, what did we have in some of the circles? I had gave you the papers. So I didn't have no copies of it. So what are some of the things that you put in that circle that you want to see from your dream, from your vision? Um, the one that stands out to me the most is bathrooms because I completely forgot that yeah. like bathrooms needed to be in an establishment. Um, right, right. <laughs> yeah, but um, I put like, I put like an art room. Um, oh, I have the picture on my phone. But I put an art room, um, a cafeteria, <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh, other things, you know, a community center. I put um, like housing yep. establishments. Uh, darn. I, I mean, that's that, and that's crazy. fine. And just like those are the, like you said, with the bathrooms <laughs> that you hadn't even thought about. You know, you're thinking of the like, banking. Oh, but it, you also are putting things in down to that very small, minute. That very small thing, and, and it's the same thing mm-hmm. with an idea. So when you want to flush out an idea, so you do some programming to flush out that idea. So you draw some circles. They could even be squares if you want to use squares. The time you can use whatever shape you want to use. But um, when you're doing that, you're flushing out the ideas. Like say, okay, I want to start a podcast. What does it, what does it require to start a podcast? You start putting those things. Okay, I need some microphones. So in the circle, you put microphones. Okay, do you need a location? So you put, okay, I need a location. Um, you know, all the different things. What are the, some of the advertising? Who's your audience? Mm-hmm. You put in the circle. Okay, your audience is going to be from 15 to 16 or whatever. So that's, and so you're flushing out. 
the ideal is what we call programming in the design world. Mm, yeah. Now, that was just such a cool exercise. And it's really wild that I thought I had a picture on my phone and I can't find it. Um, but I know where the paper is. So that's okay. what matters. <laughs> um, yes. But okay. So I think like programming and also kind of talking to someone else about it too while doing the programming really helped oh, it's um, very just get insight on the possible other things that I wanted. Yeah. yeah, because when you're thinking about it yourself, you're kind of like, oh, these are the immediate things on my mind. Yes, yeah. I'm done. I did it. But when you're like having a conversation about it, mm -hmm. you can think about all the aspects of it and then, right. you know, get in more information, especially like bathrooms, because that's so very important. Like, <laughs> like bad holes, right? Even though we don't think about it. <laughs> it's not a funny area, but... <laughs> But then also too, when you are so when yes. you are this in front of somebody, um, you want to be careful in who you're talking to the vision about to somebody because you got mm. people that are really just they just dream killers and they're not visionaries and they don't understand that you know okay this is our dream or or they'll look at you like how you gonna do all that? Don't you think that's a little big for you or you just can't mm. see it? You know what I mean? Because that just happened to me the other day, literally. Yeah. You know, uh, something that I'm, that oh, I'm no. getting prepared for. Yeah, I get I was really shocked. And so, and it was that, you know, I'm prepared for an event that, that I'm going to be doing soon. I'll definitely let you know about it when I, once I get it all together. And so I called this one place and, um, and I let her know, you know, the event I wanted to do. And so she's oh, is this your first event? I said, well, this is my first major one, you know, but I've done several small ones and stuff like that in the past. And then she goes on to say, oh, mm -hmm. and I told her the number that I'm looking, of people that I'm looking to have there or whatever. Oh, if it's your first event, you probably ain't going to be able to do that. I ain't going to be able to do that. Uh, excuse me? I said, ma'am, the number I told her, oh, we're going to do that plus. I guarantee you that. Oh, well, okay, well then um I don't do that, I don't do that number. So I'm gonna give this information, you know, and I'm not I'm saying in circles, I don't wanna say out what it is. And so so she gave me the telephone mm -hmm. number to the lady that does the higher numbers. You should have did that in the first place. Why would you say to me that because this is my first yes. time that oh you're not gonna be able to do that if it's your first time? See, right then and there, I can do anything I put my mind to. You know, you know, she took me there, right? I was like, "Look, now you're challenging me, okay?" <laughs> <laughs> and I'm one that, oh, you said I can't do it. Watch me. So I, so I asked for her name. I said, oh, "Can I get your name and telephone number?" So when I do it, I'm gonna make sure that you know that yeah, I did what you said I couldn't do. This just happened two days ago. That thing been ringing in my mm. head. Oh, guess what I done did? I done pulled a whole outline. I done did. I'm, I'm like, I'm going forward. You know what I mean? But whereas somebody else, Period. that her saying that could have just talked them out of them. See, I, I know that I couldn't do it. Well, I'm not going to do it. So you put it in a box. Because everybody don't have that kind of, that go mm. their tenacity. Because it take a lot to step into you, to, to say yes to a dream. It takes a lot to go after your dream now. Yeah. It's not, it's not easy to do. And what you get, yeah. it's like, and sometimes you have to move even though you're scared. Just move scared. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And so, and, and so, yeah. yeah, you have to move scared. You have to trust that God is going to meet you there. You know? And so, but for a person mm -hmm. to say that to somebody, she just said it to the right person because it was what I needed just to push me. I'm like, oh, okay, now I'm going to really get, <laughs> you know, whereas somebody else, <laughs> that would have detoured them and like, oh, okay, yeah, I probably can't do it. And then you just put it back in the box because you was already scared anyway. And so she just gave you the okay yeah. to say yeah, you can't. You probably can't do it. Yeah, I probably can't do that. I ain't gonna do that. And I'm gonna let her know. Don't ever tell nobody that. 
because you could kill somebody's dream doing that. She just had the right person. That just gave me motivation mm. one-on-one. <laughs> I don't know, I already started the committee, everything. <laughs> I said, I'd call people. Motivation said, I'm yeah, yeah, oh, I've been moving through since she said that. So I'm going to make it happen. <laughs> now, that's amazing. So, so when you were going about this planning stage of getting your dream out, um, what kind of like steps did you take? Did you do programming and then some other things, or? Um, I did the programming first. I had to decide what all that I what did my business incubator look like, you know. I did I did my programming. Once I got mm. all of that established, that would help me to create the drawings that I needed because I, because it was a commercial space. Okay. I had to do architectural drawings because it has to be submitted to the city. So with the program, I was able to do that. Um, I said, okay, this space will work. Because I needed to find out if this space would work for all the stuff that I wanted mm-hmm. to put in it. And it did. Um, so then after that, Okay. And you know, I went um I went to call the real estate agent. I said, Can I look at the space one more time? You know, because I wanted to be sure before I signed anything, right? So I came in the space, I visualized it mm-hmm. here, I prayed in here, you know, like, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do in here? Because it needed to be effective. And then um, and I had to just sit in the space for I sat in the space just for an hour, just visualizing. Everything that was on my um, paper, mm. you know, I started visualizing color, style, yeah, you know, what it needs to look like, you know, uh, it was very specific, you know, what I want, you know, when I put this together, I also put down what do I want people to see when they come in here, how do I want them to feel mm-hmm. when in here? I want them when they come into the dream center, I want you to feel like, oh. Dream as big as you can. How big is your dream? Okay. <laughs> because some people be afraid to tell people that. Like, you can't do that. <laughs> no, nah, because I had somebody so, oh, well, I don't want to dream too big. I was like, no, you at the dream center. Big, dream as big as you can dream. We require it. <laughs> mm. So that's the environment that I want you to be a safe space for you. It's just like, oh, you come in with some outlets. Oh, yeah, that can happen. Oh, yeah. So we start, we'll start sitting there talking about it, you know. Oh, how, oh, and people, other people give me suggestions, you know. So we're going to be doing more of that, you know, with the dream mm. center and where it's a think tank and you can come in there with your dreams and know that, oh, okay, you're mm. safe here. You know, you're safe to dream big, you, you know. And then people here, yeah. we do a mentoring program with the Imagine Me Dream Bootcamp. And that's what we do in the class. So when people yes. come into their dreams, you know, and it's amazing how everybody will collectively help you to come up with the things that you're trying to do. You see what I'm saying? So if it don't make sense, oh, what, do you, what about that's this beautiful. idea? What do you do about that? You know what I mean? So nobody's competing with each other. Because like I mm-hmm. said, you can't compete with somebody else's dream. So when you have that in your mind, all that goes off the table. You don't even care about what nobody doing. You're like, well, that ain't my dream, so that ain't my assignment. Mm. You know what I mean? And it, 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 it's a game changer. When you, yeah. think, when you have a mindset like that, I'm not in competition with you. I don't really care what you're doing because I have my assignment. You see what I'm saying? And you're building out that assignment. Mm, now, you may look at yeah. stuff like inspiration. It should be just that inspiration. But you got people out here literally copying folks. You know, then they wonder why it's not really working. <laughs> see, you know, see, you have a secret sauce that I don't have for what you're doing. Mm. You know, you have the secret yeah. sauce. And it fits you. It don't fit me. So when I'm going to go over and try to be... <laughs> you know <what> I'm <laughs> okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so was, did you have like I guess the business concept of what was going to be done before you went into programming for the space or yeah, I, did. I, I had how did I that... had that way before I did the space. So yeah. how did that like planning or fleshing out go for just the business concept? 
Well, the business concept, well, I started out um, with, okay, I, I was like, okay, I want to do this business incubator. Not, not business incubator. Mm-hmm. I want to do a co-working space. It started off like that. Mm-hmm. I'm like, well, maybe the co-working space had a whole okay. thing. And so and I, it's like something wasn't hitting with that. It wasn't mm. met, it wasn't um connecting with the with the a dream concept. And so I yeah. just kept thinking about it and like that don't sound right. It's just not quite there yet. And so then one day I was, you know, I was working on some architectural plans, I was drawing. And and I don't know, I I I had um created a room which was somebody else's project, right? So I, I mm-hmm. drew a design for them and then it came to me. I'm like, oh, that's it. Oh, so I heard wrote it down. I always keep something right now. <laughs> so I heard it and wrote it down, you know, and I'm like, that's it. So now I knew what it's an incubator and, it, you know, and it looks different from a co-working space because we're doing training, mm-hmm. planning resources. You know, you're a small business to help you to get to where you're trying to go. Because as you, as you probably mm-hmm. know, on this business journey, it's just a lot. <laughs> it's a lot of moving pieces. Mm. Mm. You know, it's like, okay. Uh, a whole is, mountain. <laughs> it's a whole mountain. And it's like, okay, this is not working. And when you see something is not working, then you know, it's like, okay, that's not working. I got to figure out why it's not working, but I still got this over here that I got to do, but I got to figure out why it's not working because this is an important part. You see? So now you got to go back to the mm-hmm. drawing board. So what I did, it kept changing, but the programming mm-hmm. was right there. All the ideas were still there, but it kept changing. What I realized, I had to take this out, take that out. So by the time I got to this space, I was trying to get an 8000 square foot building that cost 1.3 million Ooh. that's what i was trying to get oh. and i <laughs> had it all on my wall and every period <laughs> right and and so i came to where i'm at now i'm in i got a 2200 square foot you know commercial building mm-hmm. that i lease and big and dreams that's big dreams I'm talking about, you know about leasing they want to tell us that, oh, you don't need to lease, but you can really make money in leasing. Okay. But I'll tell you about that next month. <laughs> but mm-hmm. anyway, so the 8,000 yes. 8, square foot building that I was trying to get, um, you know, I didn't have enough money for it. I couldn't get the loan for it. It was just a lot of things that just wasn't happening. So I just said, I'm just going to keep saving, you know, and because the down payment was going to cost me like 150000 as a deposit mm. and then it was a space that was not built out you was going to have to build it out so it's going to be a lot of money involved by the time i paid yeah. 1.3 million you was going to have to put another by another five and a half a million in it just to fix it out to build the space out you know mm-hmm. and um so i came here to this building for a, another client that wanted to open up a restaurant so the real estate agent had said to me, you know, she said, I got two more, I got two other spaces. I would love for you to look at. It. I said, well, you know, I really don't have time. And she said, oh, no, it's going to take a few minutes. She was adamant about me seeing this space. <laughs> I was like, okay. I, so I went annoyed. <laughs> yeah. you know, I was truly annoyed. That way, annoyed. Okay. Yeah, just to, so I say no, you know, I was like, let me just go and look at this space real quick. Went in the door. Mm-hmm. I was like, hmm. And I, I promise you, I heard I heard this voice say, scale the vision down and get started. That's what God told me. Oh. Scale the vision down and get started. Because as long as I was sitting there waiting for that 8000 trying, and I don't have that money, other stuff is not working, it was scaling down to a smaller mm. scale. It just made so much sense. And get started. We be trying to start with the big stuff. Yeah. It's that little stuff. Just like that that room you in, that may be a nine by ten room. But guess what? You're starting. Whereas another person, yes. Oh, I'm trying to get this this five thousand square foot to do my little podcast and have all this da da da. You still waiting. Guess what? You already moving. You already got an audience. You see what I'm saying? That's the difference. Mm-hmm. And so and I was like, it made so much sense. And then the way the space was set up, 
it was perfect for, you know, my office rentals, you know, different things that, you know, my workstations, all the different, my podcast little area, all the different little things that I had mm-hmm. in here was here. You know, I had to knock down some walls to make some other things work. But everything on my programming circle is in here, literally. But what I had to do was scale it to a smaller portion. So I'm just a small mm. boutique incubator, which is more intimate. Okay. But guess what? Now, I'm, now I have I have gotten contracts be, that I wouldn't have gotten in the house. I've got connections. Mm important connections that I wouldn't have gotten into the house. You know, you had to be in a commercial space Mm -hmm. for it. But it's just a smaller scale from the big vision. This is only part of it. It's only a place to start. And what I'm thankful for, I'm so thankful to God for is that if had I got into that big 8,000 square feet, I'm putting a lot of money out up front. So now I want you to put that money out front and everything like that, got everything rolling. Okay, now this is this is the hard part. How you stay how you stay alive. <laughs> oh. Okay. Yeah. Ain't even think about that. <laughs> how you keep them doors open? Oh, that's a whole nother ball game. That's a whole nother mm-hmm. ball game. Okay. I come in here every day and sometimes it's like, it's just me. I'm like, okay. Okay. <laughs> you know, that's a whole other ball game. And if had I been in something that and I wasn't ready for it, and I thought I was ready for it, that would have really been a mess. Mm. Whereas God put me in a place where I'm where it's manageable. Twenty two hundred square yeah. feet is manageable. You know what I mean? It gives me time to build everything up. We've been here two years now, we've made it two years. Like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, and it is, it's not easy making it to two years, you know. It's so not, that, that's it's not that's, easy doing it a couple of months. It's like get to, get to a year. Oh yes, I made it to a year. Two years. Okay, it'll be two years in November. This month coming up, uh-huh. it's gonna be two years. <laughs> Congratulations! I definitely invite you to the event that we're gonna have. You know, to be, oh, period. You know. Thank you. See, we're we're already matching. You know, okay. we're already on the same vibes. <laughs> so, so don't be afraid to start a small place, and that's why that's why sometimes you need to get off the internet. Oh, they doing it big. How to compare yourself with it? Like I said, you can't compete with somebody else's dream. It's not yours. Mm. I always say that over and yeah. over because those are some of the things that affect us. Like, dang, they are, dang, they doing that? Man, why that? My, my stuff ain't moving. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? You yes. start to ask, now tell me, do you, I know I, I know it's happening with me. <laughs> I'm like. Yes, no, it happens with me all the time. I'm like, Laura, what about well, me? Well, actually, less now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, yeah. And, as you change your mindset, and, you, and when you change your mindset, like what I'm talking about, Girl, you don't mean think about had that stuff on here. You're like, okay, I'm happy for you. You hit that light. Mm-hmm. Congrats. <laughs> you know, sometimes you know, we don't hit the light. You just like, well, I don't even want to. No, you know, subconsciously you don't want to hit it. You know, mm-hmm. not that you ain't on, but but then in a way you are. You like, okay, I ain't gonna let you know that it's it's pretty cool. But I uh, hit that light. Mm-hmm. Congrats. Awesome. And I truly be meaning it. Yeah, because I don't, I don't care about. I, I'm only concerned with the assignment that God has given me, the purpose that the journey walk that I am walking, that I am happy about it. I don't care if I haven't made a million dollars. It does not matter mm. because when you in, when you in purpose work, oh, it's a, that's a different ball game, a different level of happiness. Oh, I like that. That that money a man can't give you. Because yeah, you talk about purpose work is is changing lives. You're a part of changing mm. somebody's life. That's the difference. With I, I like that. This is about changing lives. I really like that. I'll like, put that on the website. <laughs> like you being on this podcast, you know, you know, I can see you going somewhere. This fits you. You know what I mean? Oh, it does. You. 
<laughs> it does. And you don't know who you'll be reaching. Mm-hmm. Yes, no. That's the goal, to reach yeah. all over the world, help someone just a little bit, just a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. And just be your authentic self. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Amen to that. <laughs> no, okay. But that's that's really that's really cool. Like how that all came together. And definitely like like you were saying, just being able to shift from what you thought needed to be done, but shifting to what you need in this moment. I think right. that's a that's a really good skill. To be able to have like that discernment is like really crucial in life i wish you just the more you get in tune yeah the more you get in Mm. tune with yourself and because then you're gonna start paying attention in a different way you know Mm. so when you're looking at things because your the light is on you're starting to pay a little bit more attention to it and then it's gonna be like yeah like oh let me shift that real quick it's gonna be quick like that oh no we i need to make this move right here yes it, it'll come like second nature to you. You're going to be more in tune. So, you know, it, it, even with the people that you talk to, people that is on your team, you have to be mm-hmm. aware of that too. Because as you're building that dream, that vision, everybody can't go. Yeah. Everybody just can't go. Everybody cannot. No. Yeah. I've I've been learning that too. And like, I, I met someone recently um and we were just having a conversation like about business and I realized I don't particularly talk to a lot of my friends about like business like I may mention what I'm doing or something like that but it's not like a a conversation about what could be done or you know like aspirations or something and my new friend she was saying no Jada excuse me what are you doing like she's like this doesn't make sense. This seems like a distraction, like for something that I was trying to do. And I was like, oh, oh I never thought about that, it that way. And so just having those types of people around you that can put things into perspective, because yes, what it was sounded nice, but in actuality, it didn't align with where I was trying to go. Like right. it's like a completely different subject. So I think that is really important to have those people around you and to, and I know it's sometimes hard to find those people, but, you know, just keep meeting new people. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? (laughs) And along the journey road, God sends people along the way. And what I also Mm -hmm. learned about relationships, stop setting your relationships up to fail. Because if you know that Mm. you have a friend or associate or whatever, you know, that, and I'll use an example. Um, I have a friend, good heart, been known her for years, love her to pieces, that's like my sister or whatever. But she is <laughs> poor at business and she's poor at organizing stuff. So mm. I put her in a situation to um to help me organize some stuff and it was horrible. But I already mm. knew that. So it's like, yeah. okay, why did I set her up to fail? I set her up to fail, then I'm mad at you. Okay, and we mm-hmm. weren't speaking for a yeah. while, and so I learned oh, wow. something from that. Yeah, because it was it was major, but I'm just like, but you know she suck at that. She's not good at that. But now when it comes down to like, hey, you need some prayer, sister, gonna go to war with you. She was like, look, I'm gonna stand, t- I'm gonna be to- two toes down with you. You know, I'm gonna help you fight. No, period. <laughs> That's. That's where I need to keep yeah. her at. But then, so one person cannot be your in all and be all. And we set our friends, our friends mm. and our families up to fail. And then you met them, you ain't speaking to them. And now that relationship is destroyed. So what I had, I had to lose some relationships to learn that. And so what I do now, mm. I have, I have a friend. She's an older lady. And that's another thing too. Have multiple generations in your circle. Yes, that's important. That is important when you in got your, in all your those village. Peers yes, your peers. It's like okay, they don't have no wisdom or twenty years of wisdom that somebody that's older than you can give you, or even connections. 
connected mm. to a different area that your younger um, ones that they can't do. You know, so I tell people have multiple generational friendships, you know, because I have, I'm, I'm friends with some seniors, but I love my seniors, honey. I said, people be sleeping on the seniors. When I tell you, they have wisdom, connection. He's like, okay, I'm going to connect you with so-and-so and so-and-so, and I want you to get him a call. I'm like, for real? See what I'm saying? <laughs> but because we have a relationship, yes. you know, I'm able to, you know, and then just sometimes I just need older wisdom to talk to, just to talk me off a ledge. When I'm feeling like that, I'm like, you know, yeah. like the point where I felt like, um, I think somebody was trying to copy what I was, you know, the dream center. It was just really horrible. I'm just, why did this mm. come to me like that? Right. And I, and I, and I think I was just like over the top and I just felt like just quitting and go, go on a deserted island, just forget everybody and just go sit up. This, this I, that's, just how I felt. that's literally how I felt. I really felt like that. I'm like, I'm like, I'm sick of this stuff, you know? And so a whole weekend, so a couple of my, I called a couple of friends, you know, and, and this, and she, she's the one. I don't talk to her about business stuff because she's not a business mm -hmm. owner. And, you know, sometimes she kind of talk to you out of stuff or whatever. But if it comes down to like supporting you and, and things like that, you know, and praying, Mm -hmm. She's watching her too on that. Because she's going to give me some good wisdom. She's going to give me some good biblical wisdom. <laughs> you know, you know that, that's going to make no, me, period. Give me a scripture too to read. Or, you know, listen to this person, da 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 da. She's that kind of friend, you know. And then I have a friend that she lives in La La Land. I don't talk to her about problems. Because <laughs> she can't handle problems. If you're not talking uh, about oh, my jet setting, oh, are, are we jet setting? You know, I was in Paris in my mind. <laughs> I was there, like, I'm like, did you just, did you just hear me? I just had a problem that, oh, girl, you know, that kind of, you know, I teach a girl, you know, I'm talking about that. That just depresses me. So I can't, I don't talk to her about problems. But when it comes down to fun, that's my fun chick, that we go have fun. <laughs> but, you know, mm -hmm. I'm like, I said, okay, Lord, I'm, just, I'm getting this. And so then, therefore, I don't fa I don't put them to fail me. Because if you fail me, mm. then I'm going to be through with you. That's how relationships get broken. But, you know, you already know how that person is. So you already know. Why you, why you putting them over there? Mm -mm, don't do it. <laughs> so those, those, wow. those, those are really important that we need in our circle. You know what I'm saying? And, and the same thing with yeah. me. I have friend, I have guy friends. They are truly like brothers. That's my those are my brothers. I call them my brothers. You know what I mean? That I can talk to them mm -hmm. about certain things, or you know, like when it comes down to construction, you know, I'm like, look, you know, I need to know this, da 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 da. They able to help me to navigate in that area. So you you want to definitely have your um your circle diverse. Cause I, I'm gonna tell you, cause I, mm. I, I'm gonna tell you, I just been tired of going to all this women stuff. Oh, women, all women, it's all women. That I was like, if I could go to another women event, I'm yes. Okay, I, I need to see some brothers. <laughs> Just some diversity. Diversity, yes. I need some diversity. No, I feel that. I feel that. Yeah. So those things are really important too, you know, along your journey too. So, so that was yeah. I never even. Um, I never even realized like the setting up people to fail thing, like subconsciously, you yeah. really are aware. Like, I know they're not good at this skill, but I'm going to give them a chance. I'm going to ask them anyway. And it, it doesn't work. Yeah. So that it is going to work. Wow, that is something all over. Yeah. Not going mm. to, I'm not yes. going to, because I, I'd rather have you in my life, you know, than to not have you there. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Uh, mm -hmm. so no, I'm not going to, uh, mm -mm. and, and like I did with one of my yeah. long time friends that we grew up with, I grew up where I've been known her over 40 years and mm. she's not a business person. And so I was trying, you know, cause that's my best thing. I wanted to get her into business. I was like, oh, girl, that'd be a good business. Yes. And I didn't realize I was forcing that on her. 
And then she was here. Oh. Then it got where she's trying to keep up with me. You see what I'm mm. saying? No, I'm, and then yeah. it's, it caused a strain on the friendship. You know, a little bit. We still mm. good. You know, we still good. But there, there's a little strain there. You know, she should have to keep up with, with what I'm doing. You know what I mean? She's mm-hmm. okay just as she yeah, is. she's her own person. She's her own person. Yeah. What she's doing, and so me putting business. That's why I started to realize these things. Everybody ain't cut off a business. That's not everybody's journey, and it's okay. You know, and I want to mm-hmm. make sure that I utilize my friendship in the right way. You know, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Oh, that's real powerful. Wasn't expecting to get on that. That's that's really powerful, especially with maintaining relationships. <laughs> uh, that's all the kind of uh, that you need. Mm, yeah. Uh, I ha- I have a question, kind of, kind of related to this, but when it comes to like planning out things, and you know. I guess bringing people along because sometimes you have that you want to have an accountability partner. Like for instance, I, um, my aunt and I were both kind of starting podcasts around the same time. And so oh, okay. I thought, and because at first I was like, Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh. <laughs> um, I was like helping her. I was like recording and like producing the stuff for her, but I realized I wasn't the best fit for that. So I was like, okay, maybe I can be an accountability partner to help her like plan out things. And then she could be an accountability partner for me. And what that looked like from my perspective was um, coming up with like task lists or like coming up with episodes and then writing those down and like just checking in with her to make sure that she arranged those things. But accountability to her looked like checking in once a month to see if we accomplish things that we might have said we were going to accomplish. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and so, like, how how does one kind of balance those things? Mainly, even keep an accountability for yourself if you don't have an accountability partner. Mm-hmm. But like, I guess maintaining accountability relationships. I don't know. I've never. I don't think I've ever been successful, or as I don't want to say not successful. Successful, but actually having accountability measure points like deliverables i guess well so so you're saying if um how do you if you have accountability or if you don't how do you navigate that is that what i'm hearing yeah both how you navigate both okay um Mm -hmm. well first of all it's like with your accountability partner, you have to have goals. What are you trying to accomplish and what do you need that accountability partner to help you do? To establish mm-hmm. that first. You know, because sometimes we just be doing stuff. Makes sense. <laughs> we yeah. be doing stuff. Like, what you talking That's true. Yeah. And so what is what is the goal for a, to have an accountability partner? Are you trying to accomplish a, a particular mm. project? That's why. That's why I tell people turn everything into a project. So if this is project mm. one. What are you trying to accomplish in, um, with accountability partner for project one? Uh, or, or do you need that accountability partner for all those projects? If you got ten projects that you're trying to accomplish, right? Because when I say project, mm-hmm. and that goes back to my. Um, design <laughs> you know ability we all have to turn everything's a project you know but projects you already know you want to finish and you got to finish and it's a deadline so that's why i said you know yeah. and when you put things with a deadline that's why i said turn it into a project because it's trying to trick the mind like okay well you know like you know how you talk to somebody you know i'm working on this project you know <laughs> mm-hmm. really good project. so yes but, so, for, so for project one you need accountability partner, right? What do you need from that accountability partnership for project one? Because that may not be necessary mm. for project two. So project two, I don't need a project. I can do that myself. So with navigating those two, now I'm navigating two projects at one time. But you set all the goals for that project one. 
your accountability partner and what you need them to do and what is your outcome for it that you're trying to accomplish. Mm. So the other what whereas the other one that you don't have accountability partner, but you have goals set and then you have a checklist of the things that you need to accomplish on there. And when you do a list, it works. It's really, really helpful. So I do it to, to go to do I a to-do list every day. I have a to-do list. Now, I may have five things mm. on there, but I'm probably going to end up accomplishing about three of them. But that is the best way. Yeah, but you accomplish something. Can, right. Even if you accomplish one or two things on that list, you've accomplished something. So then what you did accomplish goes into that next day. That's the next day checklist. Yeah. That's why it's so important to have a journal or, or a planner that you use to utilize. You know, because a lot of, because see, when it's digital age, but if you notice, um, people are getting back to writing again and using the plan. So I use all facets yeah. of them, you know, because sometimes, you know, when you, when you're writing, it's just, because I, I use, I use the, um, um, emails, I use all form of communication, texting, you know, like some people, like a lot of young mm. people, not just young people, people period nowadays, they just want to text you. Well, you know what? I can't always text you. You know why? Because my right hand had finger is on the mouse and I am drawing. I'm drawing architectural plans. Mm. So I would have to literally stop and text you when I need to be multifunctional. I'm going to mm. like, call you and put you on that speakerphone because now I can still work and talk to you at the same time. But when I'm drawing, it requires that makes me sense. to... You see what I'm saying? And so we have to be open yeah. to all forms of communication based on the task that you're doing. Now, if I'm not doing anything where I'm using my hand or, you know, you know, I have three screens, you know, so each screen, I got something different on there that I'm doing. Yeah. So a person that like to text, all, like I have a friend, all she do is want to text. I'm like, can't talk right now, <laughs> baby. You know, and if you, if you can't pick up the phone, I don't have time to talk to you. Because I, I have a deadline that I got to get out and I need my hands to do it. So, yeah. <laughs> so be open to that. You know, no, so, that's so wild. Yeah. Because you got some people, they will not pick up that phone. They're just going to text you all day. I'm like, look, I'm driving. That's I can't neat. text you. you, gotta, you I, I tell you, young know, people, y'all got to gotta be open. You got to open yourselves up. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. I, I have a client. Um, he will, he don't do no texting. He said, oh, I don't do texting. I said, oh, well, can I email mm. you? Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't take emails. So, oh, wow. Yeah. He said, you can leave me. If you can pick up that phone, call me and leave a message. Ooh, point blank period. <laughs> I said, well, I need to go over the drawings with you and I need to sit down and talk with you about the design. Oh, well, we can set up a meeting. He was that, we went through that through the whole project. How how old is he? As how old was he? He's an older guy. He was like in his sixties, seventies, something like that. Oh. Ah. But very, very interesting. You know, and he was he was doing an addition onto his house. He wanted an addition to add onto his house and stuff like that. But you know, I don't mess around with that. Uh, you got to call me if I don't answer the phone. This is how you talk. If I don't answer the phone, then you pick up. You just leave me a message. I'm gonna call you back. And he do. You leave him a message. He call you back. Mm. It taught well, me something. at least so, you know you're getting stuff done <laughs> right but then it, it taught me something to be open to different situations and things don't be in a box because when you think about God God is not in a box he's outside the box. Mm. so I like to really just yes. keep myself open and still give that good customer service even though it was challenging for me but I had to make it work and so I made it work mm. so and I had set scheduled um, meeting times. So that worked for me. Yeah. So then I, I revolved everything around that day. So we met every Tuesday or every other Tuesday. Then if there was nothing to discuss, then we had no meeting. So you're setting up different things that's going to work for you to make that happen. In what you're trying to accomplish. Yeah. See, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. So just be up to do it. Yeah. Okay. We're coming close to the end of our conversation yeah, great time. um yes 
no this i love this so much um do you have anything that you particularly want you know young adults to know about navigating or setting a path for themselves um in life i guess um one of the things that you know i definitely want the young especially gen z now the thing is about gen z you know and our millennials too but especially gen z Gen Z is 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 a group that's really gonna take you by storm. I mean, they, mm. they're some movers and some shakers that Three. that I love about Gen Z. Gen Z will work. They don't mind um, mentorship because I'm gonna tell you, mentorship. I have a mentor, mm. and I know a lot. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm the first person in the room, and it's a lot I don't know. Also, too. So if if you don't take away anything, you know definitely get you some good mentorship. You know, somebody that believe in you, you know, and you can learn from one another and just always mm. be open to learn. Don't never put, don't put yourself in a box and thinking you know everything, you got it all figured out. If you do, then keep doing what you're doing and just let us know how it's working for you. Because yeah. when life comes, you know, and the challenges come that you can't figure out, that's when you have an opportunity to call on your different mentors or people that's in your circle that can help you navigate through situations and problems and that's going to encourage you stuff like that. So mm, I, I really yeah. encourage that a lot, mentorship, you know, and be open to learn, you know, and then also to, okay. you know, the, us older ones learn from you guys. Okay. Cause you're, you know, you're nice. a whole different uh, tidal wave of technology on the cutting edge and stuff <laughs> like that. So it's a lot of things that you can teach the older adults too as well. So be open to that too, you know. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I like that. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Can you let the audience know how they can get in contact with you if you have any social medias or websites that you want to share with them? And then you can leave the audience with some parting words. It doesn't have to be related to what we talked about today. Yeah. If you don't want it to be. Okay. Yeah. So um, you can reach me at um, 404-903-0451. And um, you can email us at design, info at Design Style and Co. Dream Center. Well, DS and Co. I'm sorry. Let me say that again. Info at dsandcodedreamcenter.com and one of the things also too I wanted to mention too is that we do have a training boot camp for ages 17 to 30 and we and in that it, it, it's called Imagine Me um, Dream Builders on Boot Camp and what we do there we mentor hmm. from that age we're from 17 to 30 we help you to find a passion a purpose so you can live out the dream and so our next one is our next boot camp uh, is coming up is in January, but we're taking applications now. So what I can do is leave some information for you, um, for your yeah. audience, and they can go ahead and sign up. And we only do between ten and twelve um, students at a time, and we keep it small. It'll always be small because we need to make sure every person is getting what they need. So nobody's leaving out there and like, mm -hmm. okay, uh, well, they only pick two people. They only pick, no, all uh, ten or twelve will be walking out with what they need. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, so that's why I'm gonna always keep it small. So because everybody's into the numbers, I don't care about the numbers. Mm. We care about period. You know the people that's because guess what, the numbers start. After a while, before you know, oh, we can do a thousand <laughs> on a ten scale. <laughs> okay, yeah, so I'll get you the um, information with you again. So if somebody calling and they want the information, then um, you'll have. Oh, well, thank you so much. Did, something that you want me? Okay, I think I did. All. I think I covered all right. Um, and the last thing is leaving any parting words. You know, just about anything you want to share. You want people to know. I don't know. Okay, well, it doesn't have to be related to the conversation today. Oh, okay. Um, well, one of the things that I do want people to know is that, you know, whatever your dream is, you know, go for it. Don't even, just do it. Even if you're scared. And 
you got to put God in that plan or your higher power, you, you know, mm. or whatever you call your higher power, but you have to, <laughs> you got to put some spirituality in there. You know, so mm. I, I would leave you with that. And if Thank you, need, you, you can so always call much. Me. You can always call me if you have some questions or whatever. Um, you can call me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Margaret, for coming Thanks on. For uh, audience, audience, I hope that, I don't hope, because I know that you learned a lot today. <laughs> uh, but I do hope that you implement some of the things that you learned and just kind of, you know, meditate on the things so that you can see how you can use them in your life. Um, yeah, so I thank you all for joining us today. And remember to keep creating a village wherever you go. And also, um, you know, follow us on Instagram at C-A-V underscore village. Like, comment, subscribe. Do all the things that help with the algorithm. So, thanks. (laughs) All right. Bye, everybody. Thanks for being me. (laughs) Thank you for being here. Thank you. All right.